I can hold his arms down. I'm like, Mike, it's going to be faster if you just stop moving around. And what did Mike say to you? He uh, just, uh. On a snowy, freezing, cold night in Orange County, New York, a 911 call is made from a concerned driver. I'm, I just drove on um, North Hudson Street in Chester, and um, okay. I just saw a, a body on the side of the road. I'm not sure if it was a, I drove past it twice. Um, okay, slow down now. Tell me exactly what happened. It looked just like a pile of clothes, but as I got closer, I saw shoes, and I think it was a person. I'm going to have them over there as soon as possible. Please identify the victim as Michael Partridge. He's 28 years old and father of one. He's been badly beaten. His hands and feet are bound, but shockingly, Mike is still alive and is rushed to hospital where he will sadly succumb to his injuries and passes away. They soon find out that he should be with his girlfriend, Courtney Clemenza. Unable to find Courtney, they arrive at her mother's house and ask if she could come in for questioning. Seat right there, Jean. I'm gonna sit here. What did you hear exactly happen? I oh? hear somebody threw him a beating. Who did you hear threw him a beating? I guess it was my body. Who'd you hear this from? Courtney. Courtney told you that. I didn't hear it, she texted him. What did she say specifically happened to him? He got him good in his ankle and his wrist, I think that's what he said. The person who got him good was well, I think it was Bobby. If Courtney's not home, where would she be? Bobby and, and Seth's house. You, are you at my house right now? I'm in the f police station. I've been here since 1 o'clock in the morning because of you and your douchebag friends. We just want to investigate a road. We just, we just want to uh, meet up with you and make sure you're okay. Where can I meet you? Yeah. Quick, quick check and go, we'll see you there. Detectives go to the gas station to meet Courtney. They can see that there are three other suspicious people in the car she just walked out of. They bring all four in and question all of them separately. Seth Pelsang is a friend of Courtney and whose house she was at that night. This apartment is shared by Bobby Haskell and Tim Smith, the same three that just dropped Courtney off. DM watching TV. Is anybody else at the house? I think his name is Michael or Mike or something like that. Um, when was the last time you saw Mike? That's a good question. When was the last time I saw Mike about him? Okay. Up in the morning, Courtney, and she came back to go shoot with me. Okay, to your home address. Mm -hmm. Where was Bobby? In the house. I don't know if he's here. I don't have no criminal nice help or anything. I know, I know, I know. It's like I'm thinking about it. It's very vital for you to be honest. It's the brave thing to do, and you know it's the right thing to do. Can I hear him the phone? He just wants this guy to sit there. It's okay. So no, we're back where we left off. Then what? Anything? Uh, do you need a lawyer for a second? I can take it. Sorry. I really couldn't tell you. Like, stuff could go on and I won't be there. Why in the world would I know a story about confrontation that took place? That doesn't make any sense. I won't know. Well, I don't know anything about it. All of a sudden, we heard a bomb, and it sounded like a gunshot. I, there's a hole on the side of my door. The door that came open? Yeah, yeah. That and, thing, that's new? Yeah, that's just what they do. From? Him. From Mike? Michael. Okay. And then um, 
Well, after that, like, he left. We thought he left because a few minutes gone by. Nobody heard anything. And all of a sudden, like, I saw it, like, slow motion. I swear to God. We, I had my daughter. We actually just blew up this, like, kitchen to living room. And we walked, and he must have shot, like, at the door to open it, like, with a f***ing rifle. And, um, you just saw, like, you know, like, blowing in, like, you know, air and stuff in slow motion. And, like, I looked, and, because it was, like, at my daughter's side, so I just got really scared. So I kind of just left for a little bit. I came back, and they were gone. So I, I don't know what happened. They all try their best to distance themselves, until Seth cracks. Then they all fall like dominoes, and the full story emerges. Michael had planned with Courtney to go to Seth's to rob Bobby Haskell. Michael was addicted to drugs and wanted off them, a way out, a fresh start. She will draw Michael a crudely out of the house. When he gets to the house, he knows he must get up the stairs to Bobby's apartment. Armed with a rifle, Michael blows the front door open and ascends to the first floor. Tim Smith lives in the apartment across the hall and Bobby starts shouting Tim out for help. Tim comes out and grabs this guy holding a rifle. He bear hugs him from behind to the floor. The gun is removed and Bobby, by this time, has a baseball bat. He starts beating Michael over the head, ribs and ankles. Although he's begging him to stop and screaming sorry, the beating escalates. Tim will go back in his apartment, not wanting anything more to do with it. Bobby gives Seth the bat while he cuts cord from two vacuum cleaners. Seth hits Michael once, but not very hard. After tying both Michael's ankles and wrists, Bobby takes the bat back and rains down blow after blow. Bobby picks up Michael's tied up body and throws it down the stairs. He is then dragged outside in the snow and left on the ground at Courtney's car. Here, Michael manages to remove his ties but he's found, so more ties are made, with duct tape and by ripping a bed sheet into strips. Before a tarp is put on the back seat and they all three drive Michael to his grandpa's house on Hudson Street. But once there, Bobby, Seth and Courtney decide to dump Michael's lifeless body on North Hudson, a side street way down the road. Say whatever you need to say. Me and Courtney were sitting down in the living room, and uh, all of a sudden we were watching TV and eating like macaroni and cheese and everything. And all of a sudden we heard a big bang from outside, and we we're like, What the hell? It was Mike, he had a gun. He took the shotgun and he shot through the front door of the house. He came right in with that shotgun loaded and he started chasing us up the stairs. And I ran into my room and I opened my door and I saw there was a guy that stays across the hall from me. Um, he had him like pinned down, um, had him, you know, uh, like subdued or whatever. And, um, and then Bobby just started hitting him uh, with the bat. I thought to like subdue him at first, you know. He slid him down the stairs and then brought him outside. So then they uh, got a tarp, put it in the back seat and put Mike in there. And uh, Bobby made us go with him and drop him off like over by his house. Okay. Okay, sit tight, Bobby, for a second. We know that Rob starts hitting him with the blue bat that's in the bathroom. We know this. This is not a mystery. I'm telling you what I know. I've done that. Bob, um, you know, physical location. Did you hear it moving around? I just heard him screaming at me. I said, you know, there's a guy there with a rifle or something. Did you grab the gun itself or you grabbed him? I just grabbed him. You just, just like bear hugged on you? I got my stuff together. I got out of there. Everybody that we talked to, all right? 
you know that we've analyzed everyone's phone. Okay? This is your come to Jesus moment. Because in a few moments, listen to me. Just, just, just listen to me. Because the door is important to you. Door, so, so we are at a bear, we are at a crossroads right now. Because we don't have very much more time with John and I in this room. Okay? So we're going to dispense with the whole, you know, story that you just gave me. We're going to no, right, just, just, just listen. We're going to get the truth. Deeper. Okay? And we're going to get pretty deep. And I'm going to tell you what. Okay? This is your only shot, okay, to use me as your platform as a voice. Okay. All right? I'm not going to give it to you again. I know the text messages you sent to your mother, yeah. and I know that you witnessed them. I did. Okay. There was a lot, but I did leave too. I'm just telling I you. Get, well, I get I that. Scared. I I get that. But you noticed enough, okay? Yeah. And the text messages that you sent your mom are... Mm -hmm. I'm sure he doesn't. They don't see. Just, he's not here. Oh, okay. Just so you know. Not lying. The other two are not here. Okay. Okay. So just just so you know, okay, the other two are at a different station. Okay. But I'm aware of what the other two are. You know, we we know based on your text messages and everything. It's mostly Bobby. Like, because I heard Michael say Bobby stop, and I was just screaming. I was just screaming stop because I didn't like I just heard the bat, but I don't know what he was doing, and I just heard Michael screaming, help me, and Bobby, please stop, and like, I, I know Seth is on a timer, that's the only thing Seth told me was that he went to the goat and he saw this look in Mike's eyes that scared the <laughs> out of him, that he was going to shoot him because he was trying to get the barrel towards Seth, and all I heard was, like, Mike screaming, and so that's when I went outside, and uh, it was... And I went down towards the driveway, and then Bobby came down. Like, I don't know what he thought. Like, I was, like, running to go get help. And he just followed me. Like, where are you going? I was, like, just looking for his grandpa's car to just get him out of here. Just try to get this all over with. And he, he just, like, he had this little kid's eyes. He's, like, no, like, go. He's, like, go look down the street. You come right back. So I did look. I still tried to take my time. And then when I got back, they were gone. But... It was just, I don't know where they went. To rob him? Who's him? Bobby. Why Bobby? Because he's got like a big amount of cocaine, a big amount of heroin, and he's got $25,000 of cash in his house at all times. Like, I have no more fight in me. And like, he just was broken down, he was crying, and he's like, I can't do this anymore. She was like, no, if I could get that cash, like, that would be, you know, that would just get us set. We could get an apartment. We could get a car. So we was kind of like, the wheels were turning. Okay. We were going to make a plan, like... Uh, what was like, the plan going to be? Like, he asked me where the rooms were, so I told him the placement of the rooms. Did you write them down? Did you yeah. Show? It was a map of, like, the house. It's kind of like a layout of the house. You're part of this, and yeah. it got out of control. Yeah from you having a conversation with Michael days before he shows up at the house, you have conversations with him yeah. about where the drugs are, who holds the drugs, how much that there is, even detail a map to him. They were not supposed to be in the house. But they were. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's not anything that, you know, <laughs> just a few days rest might help him out. Okay. Comes over here, shoots my door off. Man, just comes up to my room, my door is open. One door he shoots. At the wrong room door, he hit, tears grabs it. He yanked it, he shot him out of his hand. Front door to the house. Okay. So when I said, like, what the f boom. I know one of us we got a shot for that jam door. Mm -hmm. Just grabs and dials on him. And Seth grabs, takes the gun. And then what happens? With his ass. Where might go? I don't know where the f he went. He left.
know that you can see everything at this point. So what I need you to do is be honest. Well, beyond anything else, right? This is now for you, okay? So I'm gonna I'm gonna push this in just to give us some room so I don't trip because I'm a pretty large guy. All right? I want I'm just you just position me okay. the way you saw, right? Don't like was lifeless. He was just laying there, just making noises. What noises was he? Uh, uh, be face down. Or face down. Up? Face down. Okay. So he's face down. You see my face down. Hold down. Now the dude that you're talking about is who? Tim, his name, Tim, this big black guy. Tim is the guy who's holding him. Yeah. Okay. So how is Tim do it right here? This is this is Mike. He's how like is Tim? kind of standing over because Mike's not. Here's Mike Tim. He's holding his shoulders down. Mike's barely like moving his shoulders. So Mike's t- you're Tim and Tim is right here. He's just holding with his two hands. He's kind of like crouched. Okay. Oh. Tell me where Bobby is while Tim is there. If, if Bobby, John is Bobby. Bobby's at like Mike's legs. He's okay, like so here's Mike's legs. Yeah. They're tying up his legs at this point. Who's they? Seth and Bobby are like, stop and it'll be over with. Did he, did he tie him up with the, did he the said they cut their back? And where did they take him? I, I told them to take him to his grandpa's. Okay. And they left. And they left. I did hold his arms down and like, Mike, it's going to be faster if you just stop moving around. And what did Mike say to you? He uh, just, uh. So all three of you drive him out to a roadway, set him on the roadway, in the slush, the snow, the ice, and the cold, bound so he can't move or walk away, right? And you thought leaving him there was better, right, by your own mission. That was better for him. How is that better for him? I didn't put him, I don't really know. It was just well, that's, a moment. No, I know. I, you know I what I'm saying? Was stupid, I know. I just wanted him away from that house and away from the... So you drove the car. Yeah. Conversations. Okay. Just tied up. Correct. Correct. Who tied him up? I have a lot. It was it was me. Who told him? Um, um, the bag is clean. I don't know what's wrong, but I just didn't want to know about how to happen. Yeah. What the f is recording? Yeah. What are you saying? Like, yo, what the f? How, how the f did he even find me? Well, how the f did he even get over here? Like, where we lived at? Yeah. How the f did he follow your ass over there? Like, what the f? When are you going to leave this motherfucker alone? Now he's coming over here. Oh, man. So you're going to fall back or somebody else? It, it belongs in the house. Yeah, he pulled the gun out of there. And that was wrong with him on the back, but I was just situation with me. You know what? That happened. He came. He came in. He had a gun. On March 24th of 2021, 15 months after Michael's murder, Courtney Clemenza pleads guilty to second degree manslaughter and is sentenced from two to six years for her involvement in her boyfriend Michael Partridge's death. Robert Bobby Haskell pleads guilty to first degree manslaughter and is given a 12 year imprisonment. Seth Pelsang pleads guilty to first degree manslaughter and given a nine year term. Timothy Smith pleads guilty to manslaughter and given one to four years for his involvement.
I would give my last breath just to rub my son's head, you know? It's hard. I love you. I love you.